Generation Z humor. What? What is that? Why? Why? People find this funny? Isn't Gen Z just a movie about some zombies? Uh oh. Stinky. Hi, I'm Mr. Sweet, and today I'm going to be giving you a guide into Generation Z's humor. But before we start talking about Generation Z, we need to make sure that you don't confuse Generation Z with Millennials. You see, Generation Z started in 1995 and has continued through today. Millennial humor was much more simple and could be represented by the easy-to-understand memes of iFunny, such as the Velociraptor, wherein a Velociraptor scratching his chin would ponder such questions as, if two lefties had an argument, which one would be right? Or the collection of meme templates known as Rage Comics, featuring such classics as May Gusta and a troll face. Some would say it wasn't incredibly funny, but you would breathe out of your nose slightly and that was enough for them. So how is Generation Z's humor any different? Well, to understand that, you have to understand the background of Generation Z. They were born into the age of iPhones, iPods, iPads, and instant connection to the internet at nearly all times. This unprecedented accessibility, coupled with a little bit too much free time, is what led to the first influence of Generation Z's humor. <laughs> When you hear a joke from a friend, it's funny that first time, and then maybe it's funny one more time when you reference it. However, imagine a bunch of people who you don't particularly care for come up and they all start telling the exact same joke. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that joke yeah. was funny the first 400 times you said it. This is exactly how the internet works. One person comes up with a meme and then about a billion other people repost it continuously with slight variations. This overexposure of jokes is what leads to the concept of oversaturation, which is a concept that members of Gen Z have to deal with on a near hourly basis. Being that this humor is consumed so rapidly, its life cycle is greatly diminished, leaving few month old trends to feel like they came out decades ago. Watch me where, watch me watch me nay -nay. This phenomenon brought rise to another staple of Generation Z humor. Are you an insane? Oh, Pierre, you wanna come out here? Open Gangnam Style! 21! Sure, it's cool to like things when they're cool, but it's much cooler to wait until it's completely left everyone's brain just for you to bring it back in and enjoy it ironically. Similar to the concept of movies that are so bad they're good. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, my God! I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? You enjoy it because it is awful, and making fun of it and pretending to enjoy it is, in its own right, entertaining. And this can apply to jokes and memes and music even. This is what allows outdated memes to receive a second life under the guise of ironic enjoyment, being only now that they're so unfunny and so unpopular that they can once again become funny. Sort of like recycling. Not good. Delicious. Finally. Some good f***ing food. And sometimes the fact that the joke doesn't make any sense is itself the punchline. Take, for example, the Xie Hao Piao trend on TikTok. In July of 2020, there was a TikTok trend wherein people would use the chorus of the song Xie Hao Piao as the punchline for their joke. There wasn't inherently anything funny about the joke, and even when you translate it back to English, it didn't make the memes make sense. But the fact that nobody really knew what it meant and that it was so ill-fitting as the punchline to a joke is what inherently made it funny. <laughs> It also helps that this is a song that most people would admit to enjoying, at least ironically. This trend was later replaced by Baka Mitai, a song from a game called Yakuza Zero, wherein your character goes to a karaoke bar and sings a deeply emotional Japanese song. <laughs> No food! Three days! Oh, crabby patties, huh? Find us under the sea! Cringe! Gen Z is the generation of limitless options. They were never forced to just listen to the radio. They could pick from any song ever created and listen to it whenever they wanted. And because so much variety exists, uniqueness is highly valued. On the flip side of that idea, mainstream content is despised. You got the 
once popular trends like dabbing, the Harlem Shake, and Fortnite were all completely ruined by their mainstream use in media, such as being featured on major news networks and being referenced by their parents. So when a song or meme that they've seen before is used by, say, a company to promote a product, it immediately becomes untouchable. And at this point, it's no longer cool to like it, even ironically. But now, even in social circles, if someone has seen a meme before, it no longer has value. You've had to see it somehow at the point of conception, and if you're late to the party, you automatically suck. So if trends like video games and celebrities and songs and even meme templates are hated just because they're mainstream, how can any humor exist at all? Any joke or style that's been around is now considered completely invalid by Gen Z, so they're forced to constantly adapt to a new idea of what is considered funny. Take a look at this picture. This was for a brief time considered the embodiment of Gen Z humor. But why? Why? What is the significance of the statement, me and the boys at 2 a.m. looking for beans? What even is this image? Well, this is considered funny for a few reasons. For starters, it takes a phrase used frequently, me and the boys, and then subverts the direction of the joke that you would, as the reader, suspect. It adds an odd time to be doing anything, 2 a.m., and an action, looking for beans. Beans existed for a brief time as the universal funny word. In the early 2000s, the funny word was potato, and so the use of the word in the food itself and images inherently added an air of randomness to catch the reader off guard and evoke a sense of humor. The image itself, being frightening, adds a sense of edginess, while the poor quality, in fact it's completely unrelated to the caption, creates a sense of rebellion to the standards of modern humor. Which brings us to our next topic. Gen Z also has some of the highest mental health issues of any generation. They're plagued with things like depression, social anxiety, and thanks to growing up with access to endless information, existential dread. So how does this relate to humor? Well, these problems and fears are all directly influencing this generation's sense of comedy. Take for example the popular subreddit called To Me IRL For Me IRL. Nearly every post is about depression, suicide, loneliness, or social anxiety. And so even for the members of the generation not experiencing these problems, their humor is equally influenced by it merely due to the exposure caused by the memes being in circulation. However, some would argue that the millennial generation started the trend of depressed humor, but whether Generation Z adopted it or not, jokes about mental illness are still incredibly present throughout Gen Z humor, if not somewhat more subtle. I'm currently back in my favorite place, the porta potty that I was at last week. You say peacock, and no one bats an eye. But you say poop cock, and everyone loses their minds. Since this generation is between the ages of 25 and zero, uh, most of the humor is meant for its own age group. Gen Z has an inherent drive to be counter to the popular culture. But while earlier generations might have gotten mohawks, dyed their nails black, danced publicly, or worn skirts above the ankles, Generation Z has to be much more covert about their rebellion, being as they're constantly being shut down. I matter! Shut up, Meg, you don't matter! Because gone are the days where a guy named Chad would come up to you, flick you in the chest, and call you a dork. Now that everyone is on the internet all the time, they have thousands of people constantly telling them what they should wear, watch, eat, and that what they like is something they should be ashamed of. Do you deserve rights based off your favorite anime? And if they aren't told directly, others might be publicly ashamed or embarrassed, leaving the people of Gen Z to be more self-conscious, hoping that they don't one day end up on a fail compilation, Twitter page, or harassing subreddit. How can you look like that and not be insecure? This kid needs cancer to hit him and his his whole family. Uh, thank you for thinking of me and my family. I love this recipe. It would be fun to show people how to make it so that they can enjoy These it. These cookies were not good. Nobody gonna mention how she's using a liquid measuring cup and not a dry ingredient cup. I made them and they sucked. Here's an actually good recipe. This constant fear of rejection has caused a generation to resort to introversion and thusly awkwardness. And most of all, they've had to resort to different ways of expressing themselves and fighting societal norms. Such as distorting the audio of the punchline, which is funny because I said so. No, but actually this trend of low quality equals funny is incredibly popular purely for the reason of subverting comedic norms, such as distorting audio. So what have we learned? If it's popular, it's no longer funny. If it was popular a long time ago, it's funny again. If you can get away with saying that it's ironically funny, it's funny. If the punchline doesn't inherently make any sense, 
it's funny. If something's considered incredibly unfunny, it's funny. But also remember that there's nothing that Gen Z likes more than changing and hating things. So this video is likely to become obsolete within a couple of weeks. But until then, here's your guide to Generation Z's humor. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, don't stop party rocking or you might make me spill my beans all over the place. Comically large spoon, my friends. Uh, have a good one.